and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube as well for some Orza value. This is going to be our next deck today here. Uh, we're doing a rank up 12 hour stream. We were doing 12 hour stream because we hit enough sub goals for a 12 hour stream. But that's what we're kind of doing here is we're playing some more ranked because it's been a few days or a week since we have seeing if maybe by the end of the day we get to mythic. We're pretty close, pretty close there. So we'll see if we do. Um, before we move on here, I should mention that I just started a brand new Patreon page. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube and you like the content, hope you all hope you uh, decide to join over on Patreon. Join our community over there. It's just three dollars a month. That's it, real cheap. Uh, you know, not different tiers. Just three dollars a month. Uh, check it out over there. I'm going to be writing uh, stuff over there, putting cyborg guides and all that kind of things. If you want the link, it's down below. Uh, for the link, it's down below the. Uh, in the info panel, but it's just patreon.com slash Todd Stevens MTG, like all this stuff is. All right, but anyway, we got Orzov value to start with. This deck is, this deck's a pretty sweet deck. Uh, this is this is my kind of magic right here. I'm a huge fan of Charming Prince, you know, giving you these different options to a two mana value creature. This is the exact kind of card that I like. Are we behind against aggro? We can gain three life. Are we just starting out? We're trying to set up our draw steps. We got the scry two. And then also we can do the exile another creature if if we want uh, to be able to have our other creatures do their things. We got three burglar rat, three Eurox fenlurker. Also, uh, last time we played it, we played four fenlurker, two burglar rat. I'm just kind of mixing it up and going three and three basically because of the mana uh, instead of going with all the fenlurkers. Like if we have you know planes and and too many fenlurkers, we're just kind of switching that up, going three and three. Um, but yeah, so like we're trying to make our opponent discard cards. You know, we're trying to reduce the resources in our opponent's hand with the rat, the fen lurker, and the bell hunt. Also, so the combination of all those, and then charming prince that can that can reset them. Because you know, we could go like turn two rat, turn three fen lurker, turn four prince plus another rat, and you know, like they basically just don't have a hand left. You know, if they discard all of those cards. So we have. Um, you know, that, that's kind of like part of our deck, trying to get rid of their resources there. And then uh, grind them out with, with our, our decks gaining us resources. We have Midnight Reapers that whenever our creatures die, we draw cards. You know, if we chump block with these things after we make them discard, we draw our cards back. Same with Ayara, can sacrifice them to draw more cards. Um, Soren, of course, can bring stuff back. You know, so like we can play the rat, make them discard. You know, chump block with the rat, play Soren, bring the rat back. Uh, make them discard again. So it's just like this this continued effect that we're trying to outgrind our opponent by getting rid of their cards and gain, and us gaining more cards um, kind of things. Uh, our five-mana slot has a couple of really impactful mythics. Obviously, Oketra can be amazing. You, know, you untap with Oketra, start playing some more creatures, get a bunch of 4-4s. Four this card can just outgrind lots of stuff. And then Cavalier of Night works really well with Charming Prince, uh, you know, you know, Charming Prince resetting Cavalier of Night. If you if you sacrifice the Charming Prince, and if your Cavalier of Night dies, you bring back Charming Prince, and you know, it just works works really well with a lot of this stuff. And then our over the top cards, going one Command the Dread Horde, one Liliana, for our two over the top cards at six mana. Okay, um, one thing about the the deck, I've certainly thought about maybe playing another Kaya's Wrath, and actually, you know what, I'm going to with with how much Simic we just played against. It lo Simic looks to be pretty popular. I'm going to take out a Dispark, and um, I'm going to play the, these extra Kaya's Wraths because that's it's for like the Nissa matchup. Like they, you know, they start making like all their lands three threes and stuff, and they have all the mana creatures, and then we just want a Kaya's Wrath. Um, but I I kind of want a second Dispark, and I kind of want a second Devout Decree, but it's just hard to fit everything in. So let's do this. All right, Orza value. So we're gonna play some ranked. We're gonna play five matches now. I played I played seven with Teamer Walkers, but we're gonna play five matches with the rest of the decks. What's the cheapest best deck this season? Um, I'm not exactly sure, honestly. This this is not like this is a probably the worst format that I've ever seen for budget decks. They just keep printing everything at, like, rare. Um, you know, so for for using wild cards and everything, this is, a, this is a really bad season. 
Yeah, extra bell hunt in the sideboard is for aggro, for like the red decks because the gain life and it's a good body. But then also against control, it's just a it's a good body that you know doesn't you know against like Jeskai control for example doesn't die to Clarion and and that discard effect. So it's actually it's for aggro and for control. It's it's not necessarily for, for mid range as much though. I, I don't think Witch's Emblem is, or, or Witch's Vengeance is a too strong a card. I, I just don't think there's enough, I don't think there's enough um, tribal cards for that. Like, I would rather have Kai's Wrath, because Kai's Wrath destroys all the, the, yes, it destroys all the Nissa lands, but also destroys all the other creatures and everything too, where Witch's Vengeance would only get rid of the lands and nothing else. No, I haven't. I have not really tried any um, three mana Vivian Charming Prince deck. But yeah, that definitely definitely should try something like that. I I tried one time. We tried a Chew Lane deck, a Bant value deck with Chew Lane. It didn't go so well. But that doesn't mean that I think it would always not go so well. But I, I wasn't playing like Oko, and turns out I really should have just had Oko. All right, all these Edgewall Innkeepers. Are you kidding me? You're just letting me block Edgewall Innkeeper? Really? Really? Well, what I was in the process of saying is all these Edgewall Innkeepers makes me really regret getting rid of the Legion's End. Yeah, that was that was a a very poor attack by our opponent. Obviously, hoping we get to untap with Oketra, get to Charming Prince, make a 4-4. Four -four. And they could, of course, have removal for Oketra, but hopefully not. Yay, no removal. All right, hopefully we draw another cheap creature. Wow, that's perfect. All right, so we're gonna either scry to So we can either scry to or do the bell haunt thing again. Or they would discard at their end step. Yeah, let's scry. All right, I'll take this Legion's End. Get rid of this Innkeeper in somehow. And gold. Cool. 
Rankle's obviously a problem. Yeah, I do, I do not know how Oketra does not have reach. They really should have gave this card reach. I just don't like giving the white cards anything. So we'd like to draw a murderous rider. Be able to kill this wrinkle. Of course they have the Order of Midnight. We could get it back also. Like, if I, if I attack with Oketra, they block with Questing Beast. I can't really get through this 5-5. Five five. Belhan will let us gain three life and get rid of this Order of Midnight. I think this is the best of the last four sets for the most fun or balanced. Something. I've survived an yeah, I think. I mean, yeah, I think Throne I of Eldraine is a pretty good set you. overall. I think there's there's a couple of cards. That I really don't like, like a couple of the mythics, um, questing beast Oko. There's a couple of the mythics that are that are too strong in my opinion. Specifically those two. This will be fun to watch. Um. I just couldn't make any attacks because of this 5-5. Five five. Vivian's really difficult to beat too. Hmm. I have a lot of removal in here, you know, like the four Murderous Rider, the three Cavalier of Night, like those would all have been really nice to draw. I wonder how much, how much do I really want to go in that route? Yeah, I know, I know, like, like Grasp is awesome, Kaya's Wrath is awesome, Decree can be good, you know, but do I want to just fill my deck completely with just all removal spells, though, is kind of the thing. Um...
I'll get rid of rats. We get rid of the rats, and we'll play, you know, three new removal spells with one Dispark, one Kaya's Wrath, one Noxious Grasp for different scenarios. Yeah, possible. Possible with me. I mean, Soren can do so much good stuff, though. But, you know, like, whatever, like, if, if we get, like, the battlefield stalled, like, you know, bouncing, like, Charming Princes and stuff, like, Soren can be awesome. But, yeah, but it's possible with me taking out some creatures. Maybe I should cut a Soren or two. You know, like, Oketra here. I just didn't have the creatures. I didn't, I didn't have the card advantage. You know, I didn't have like Midnight Reaper, a Yara, things like that. But <clears throat> Ketra is very good against Questing Beast, you know, making 4 4s. Not as great against Love Struck Beast, as we saw there. I'm not supposed to legions and these one ones, am I? I don't think so. Small land. Darn. So I have one Foulmire Knight, two Foulmire Knights. Yeah, I'm going to take tomorrow off. I haven't taken a, a day off in oh, like two and a half weeks or so. Struck Beast. We got seven cards over there. Hopefully, no removal <laughs> for Oketra one of these times. Yay. I did 
not stop this fight, but I will finish it. I abhor my need for blood. Hey, the sausage. Getting the sub. Thank you so much there, Cali Commuter. Gifting the sub out there. Man. They don't stop having removal, do they? Never enough removal. They could have double blocked. Yeah, I decided I got tired. I got tired of those things. Kind of wish I would have just gotten rid of those earlier. So I guess I have to sacrifice. I mean, I could just sacrifice Bell Hunt. Remember, this doesn't come back until end step, so like the other five five is not going to die until end step. I have another murderous rider in hand. Blech. Give me sack the four four token. I'd rather sack Bell Hunt to draw a card. The four four token is more valuable. All their cards in hand are pretty loaded. So I went with the Charming Prince to get rid of a card in hand. Yeah, sacrifice the prince. The prince is a very good card to sacrifice. All right, maybe we trim two Sorens for a couple more Noxious Grasp. Especially on the draw. Looks like my opponent's hand last game. One land. One land. Now, Ayara only triggers whenever black creatures enter, so Charming Prince does not trigger Ayara. All right, no more of those.
And yeah, I'm blocking a Foulmire Knight. They attack with those. Yeah, just, just trade, draw a card. <laughs> well, that was not the best trade. So I only got two cards in hand. One, One's a Murderous Rider that I'd love for them to discard. So good time for a bell haunt there. Huh. Gotta be like more murderous rider. Why do I not play the love struck beast? Come on, land. <laughs> Ugh, it's not specific enough. So this will be our sixth mana. So the problem is, you know, this doesn't hit this other, other Foulmire Knight right now. But I, I have to dispark this Questing Beast. This is a very greedy play. If they have Vivian Arcbo Ranger, we die. Been streaming for three and a half hours. We're going from noon to midnight.
Hey, Vladimus, thanks for that resub there. I appreciate that. Good hand, opponent. Good hand. Better than my mulligan. Hey, we got 40 gems. That's cool. I don't have all the mythics. I have all the rares. I don't have all the mythics, though. I had whatever that mythic was. Whatever that was supposed to be, I had that one. Oh, you're welcome, Wizard Calamity. Happy to have you here. Dusty! With that resub. Getting all the hype boats in there. Thanks, Dusty. 2-3 lifelink sounds pretty cool, but we need land. Sub number 13 on the day. <laughs> Yeah, so you know what the set, like, the, the set was M20, but I don't have all the mythics from M20, so it was some set from M20, or some mythic from M20. Um, and Skippy! Awesome. Thanks, Skippy. <clears throat> Alright, so do we need to scry to? Now that we have, if we didn't have this fourth land, I would definitely scry. I think I can maybe gain the life, though. Well, I'm kind of glad we didn't scry. I'm kind of glad we didn't scry. All right, Robert the Rich is going to get my opponent a couple of cards. Hey, good job, Vladimir. Way to go. Torbran. You should fear. Torbrand's not good. Not good for me. Three, six, nine. Uh, too much. Yeah, that's a good curve. Yeah, good curve. Better hand than mine. Let's go with this. Cut this curve down. I think I still like the Sorens, like with the lifelink and everything. Um, Kai's Wrath should help out a little bit too. <laughs> First MTG stream I find not playing Golos or Oko. <laughs> well, you won't see any Golos too much over here. We did play Oko last deck. Um, the Sultai deck later on has Oko. And I think, uh, I guess the Arkbo has an Oko in the side. So we have, we have a little bit of Oko today, but no Golos today. Da 
<clears throat> Our opponent's name is Circle of Protection Red. <laughs> and they're playing the red deck. You know, with Circle of Protection Red. It's pretty nice. <laughs> Got a splash for Oko. And our black white deck. Yeah, I think just yeah, having having like, you know, the def I think our sideboard, like after sideboard this is pretty good. Uh this is about as bad of a hand as we can have. But yeah, you know, like having the extra Legion's End, the Devout Decree, the extra Bell Haunt, the Kaya's Rats. Um I I like our post board matchup that we got going on here, but this is a Less than ideal hand for sure. I mean, maybe I should just like on the draw. I would have, I would have, um, I would have Mulligan this for sure on the draw. I guess I didn't Mulligan because because we have so many cards that say gain life on them, and I kind of like that. I would be honored to break you. On the on the draw, I would not have been able to keep this, but so thought maybe on the play with all this stuff that you know every single one of our cards in our hand could gain life. Yeah. So I was gonna be killing the steamkin. So they can shock Bell Hunt. Huh. Okay. Ooh. Huh. I guess I should do that. Just a Steamkin, though. Steamkin's. Kind of busted. My option here, I, w I was kind of planning on just going Soren minus four, bring back Bell Hunt, make them discard again. That was my plan this turn. You know what? Let's play this thing as like a little bit of a buffer. See if they play like a couple more creatures out here and then, and then Kaya's Wrath next turn. Where I, I also have the ability next turn to, you know, sack this rider to Cavalier of Night also. This is going good. They can still double strike, but hopefully they do something else besides that. Hopefully they play another creature. Oh, looks like they're double striking. All right, what you get? A Soren. Boo. Taste 
my blade. <laughs> Time for a drink. I can make a 1-1 one -one with the castle also, like make a 1-1 one -one to be able to sacrifice. out all right game number three my sweetest friend is duress better than midnight reaper hey what's up herd behavior Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. Y'all are being so kind. Thank you so much, everybody, for the subs today. Yeah, Tybalt can be a problem. Tis true, tis true. Let's play, let's play Duress instead of Midnight Reaper. You know, take like a Burn Spell, take a Tybalt, take an Ember Cleave. No, they're not, they're not, this is not a Cavalcade deck. We have not had very good hands. <laughs> this is just like the, the game one hand, like this is too slow on the draw, but I don't want to go down to five. But this hand is not good. I mean, I guess we just have to go down to five, I guess. Ugh. On Skyland. Spell. Get out of here. Every day. No, Tibbolt's a planeswalker. Come on, Legion's End. We got four. Legion's End. Darn. I suppose I played into that. Once they started going to combat, I should have murderous rider. Once they just went into combat. Jeez. Is that game over? Puts me down to one. Ugh. Why couldn't I just murder Rider before? Like, why'd I, why'd I mess that up? Ugh.
Why'd I have to mess that up? Which is very easy. We saw Ember Cleave last game. I didn't want to, like, I wanted to wait to see if they played Torbrand. But once they don't play Torbrand and they just go to go to combat, I just need a murderous rider right then. Like that's that's definitely something I'm not gonna ever do again. <laughs> so like that's you know it's you know a good lesson to learn. I'm definitely not gonna just let them attack again. <laughs> but our our deck did not help us out with. You know, never not having any early plays with the mulligans, but oh well. Yeah, our hand was not good, but we tried. It's unfortunate that you know now we're zero and two, and I feel like you know if we play that matchup a ton, I think we're gonna win almost every single time. But that was just one that we didn't win. I think that's a that was a very favorable matchup for us. Just didn't go my way. It's magic. Yeah, this avatar was part of a um, a package for like a, a bolus or like a dread horde package or or something like a bolus's army package. I don't, I don't know if it's still in the store or not. It was after War of the Spark, so I imagine not. Um, Embercleave and Torbran. You know, Steamkin, Embercleave, Torbran killed me last game. We got rid of Anissa. He's a little burglar rat. It's basically like my opponent mold to five. You know, like they have to just ditch some cards. Walk with me. Sing Oko obviously is. I will enlighten you. There's a lot of, a lot of trouble though. Just a lot of trouble. Welcome to the feast. <clears throat> Quite the nibble. They're down to just one other card though. It's kind of all we have to do is get rid of this. We gotta just deal with this Oko somehow. You know, we made them discard four cards. I'm just not sure how we're going to deal with the Oko yet. That's all we got to do now. Yeah, we have your Oxfam Lurkers in here, too. Now we'll have Soren return Charming Prince, which will flicker Cavalier Let's of Night. Broaden your existence. <clears throat> Boo. Yeah, this is not a food anymore. It's an elk now. Oh, 
through feud or feast, your blood is mine. I demand servitude. kind of the problem with, with if you want to play creatures the problem is there's Oko in the format if you want to play creatures it's just it's difficult to play creatures when your creatures get turned into three threes into my face and put on your true shape. <laughs> So to keep Oko alive, they gotta do some kind of blocking here. Scry two. Huh. Why do you cross me? Feed the straw. They're down to just, you know, three mana with blocking with the Paradise Druid. Of course, they could make a make a food to have a fourth mana here. Your new look is enchanting. But, you know, with... The thing about like getting rid of all those cards in hand is we didn't really get rid of land. They just had three lands this whole time. Yeah, I'm going to give them less information. Not going to let them know that their card's going to get discarded. Now I can minus and grab the Cavalier of Night again. Okay. GG. All right, definitely bringing in all the Noxious Grasps. I want the Kaya's Wraths as well. But you can see like how our deck can just completely grind people down there.
Hmm. Guess I get gonna get rid of Legion's ends. Yeah, Charming Prince counters Oko's Elking ability, which is pretty nice. Allegiance End does not exile, like, it could exile, like, the food tokens that are elks. But it doesn't get rid of, like, Paradise Druid. You know, instead, I'm just going to have, like, the Kaya's Rats for, like, all that kind of stuff. It's possible I should cut Oketra. All right, we'll do that. Here we go. Oketra, not very good against Oko. Yeah. Thanks, Balder. We've come, we've come pretty close. Like we were really close to winning both of those ones that we lost. A little unfortunate that we lost both of them. Because. This deck's pretty sweet, though. This is tough. I want all of these. I mean, the easy card to put back is Command the Dread Horde, but... Command the Dread Horde can be such a great card. Maybe I put back Midnight Reaper? Soren? I feel like having Command the Dread Horde just in the chamber can win the game. It obviously it could lose the game as well if we don't if we don't stabilize. And we just have this six mana card that we can't play. So it win the game, it could lose the game. But we get to scry two with Charming Prince. You know, then then following up with Midnight Reaper where we have like some more card draw. And then Akaya's Wrath. Draw some cards with Midnight Reaper. Only land. Sorry, Cavalier, not a land. I'm certain you're quite charmed to meet me. No. Quite charmed to meet my prince here, not to meet. It's not poisoned. You. Stop. Could definitely be Veil of Summer, but I don't think we play around that. Yay. I'm not, I'm not attacking here, because if they just go Nissa, make a three-three attack. I mean, I guess Midnight Reaper just trades with that. I was, I don't know why I was just thinking that Nissa was two-two, but yeah, Reaper was two-two. All right, I should have attacked.
My my opponent didn't have mana to make a food that previous turn. No, Blight Beetle is not a very good card. I want Blight Beetle. So Kaya's Wrath doesn't kill the Wicked Wolf yet. But now they now they can't have like mana for a disdainful stroke or anything. They get to keep the wolf alive though. But I think that's still worth it. So we go down to nine. Ooh. Um. Hopefully resolve. Boom. My plan was, of course, to get back the, the Burglar Rat, make them discard another card. That was my plan. Alright, come on, land. Ugh, shock land. Um, I'm not sure what to re what to replace Charming Prince with for this deck. It's kind of a, a cornerstone to the deck, honestly. Not exactly sure it would be a, a real a good Charming Prince replacement. Seriously? More disdainful strokes? I was not expecting a third disdainful stroke to be in their hand. Let me just keep on drawing those things. I was not expecting that. 
mean, I, I, I obviously could have played around disdain another Disdainful Stroke. You know, could have just played the Burglar Rat Chump Sack instead of going Command the Dread Horde. I was not really expecting a third one, though. This thing's over. Did I bring in to spark? I don't think I did. I did not. I guess I need to spark for this wicked wolf. So obviously cutting down on fours would be something that would be ideal. I'm going to take out one bell haunt, one sore, and play the Dispark and play a Duress as well. They cut down on, on fours, and we just have that hand. Wasn't even close. So, a Yara, we're, we're a couple black sources away from casting a Yara. I'm going to put Kaya's Wrath back, though, with a handful of creatures and being on the play. And hopefully, you know, look for black mana here. All right, that counts, I suppose. I mean, that's not a bad card to have, but I kind of I just want lands. So by playing the Temple of Silence here, I do have the ability to Murderous Rider this next turn if they have turn 3 Oko. Or sorry, turn 2 Oko. Which they do have turn 2 Oko. If I would have gone Burglar Rat, I'm taking my this turn off. To the feast. And this is you know, certainly a turn we cannot take off. Remain blind. Is Outlaw's Merriment like Hearthstone or something? I don't really play Hearthstone. And all magic over here. But I guess like with the with it being random. So ideally, we'll you know if we draw a black source here, we can go like a Yara and Burglar Rat next turn. Hey Morgan. Best of one grind to platinum. Um, Simic Flash is is a good best of one deck. Uh, I like the Rakdos Sacrifice as well. Um, boo. I need that Ayara. They always have the answer to my Ayara. 
<laughs> Poor Ayara. Yeah, as far as um, as far as my best of one decks, they're all on the YouTube channel. There, there's a playlist for best of one, and you check you can check those out for all, all my best of one decks. Some of them some of them didn't do very good. Some of them, you know, we lost a lot and they weren't very good. And a lot of other ones were, were good though. So you know, you can kind of you can you can also like check the record at the end of the videos and stuff too. But all the the deck list links are there. So I can either make my opponent discard one card or scry two. I think scry two is more valuable. I mean, obviously my opponent's cards are all good. Like last turn they discarded a Wicked Wolf. All their cards are good. Actually, we'll we'll make them discard a card. If I just had that Ayara in play, our life would be better. I think they'll just guard disdainful stroke. Called it. No, I've never built a deck around amplifier before. Nissa. Oh, wicked wolf. All right, well, they don't have counter magic. This would be a great time to draw one of our top end stuff. Command the Dread Horde. I'm talking to you. Soren, Liliana. So I I probably want to probably want to save Murderous Rider to kill this 5-5. Five five. You know, we can't kill Wicked Wolf. All these games my opponents have had, my this opponent has had like three or four lands. Never any more, just all gas and then three or four lands. Open your heart to them. <clears throat> Seems like it dances around you. Is 
Yeah, I have, I have one of each castle. All right, so I can either get rid of the Wicked Wolf for good or kill Oko. And we gotta kill Oko. I see how it is. One bite, and all your cares are gone. The problem with waiting on Kaya's Wrath is Gilded Goose makes more food for Wicked Wolf. Like my last cut, you know, I only have the two Kaiser outs, one's down at the bottom. I gave them like one more turn to like draw something to try to play something out but looks like I probably should have just fired this off last turn would have would have an opponent with just one like if I would have fired it off last turn then our Cavalier of Night would have killed the Wicked Wolf I guess I needed to fire it off last turn. kind of how this league's been going for me like if I make a decision it just ends up being the, like you know if I make like a 50-50 coin flip decision you know like cast the Kaiser out there or wait it just ends up being the wrong decision you know again if if I would have just cast the Kaiser Wrath immediately they don't get to make that other food and then I draw the Cavalier of Night because I, I would have you know shocked in and played the 2-3 then I draw the Cavalier of Night that would have killed the Wicked Wolf. And so we would have had Cavalier of Night to them just having, uh, they would have had just Gilded Goose and, and then they had nothing this turn. So like this game would have been over. But now my opponent's in a pretty good spot. Dead make great minions. Huh. Loyal and silent. I I was expecting that to get disdainful stroked. However, things kinda of go, gone wrong for us. 
So yeah, if I minus, I, I bring back a Yara. I think I want to do that. I'm, I, I think I want a Yara in play. No, I don't want to attack before minus, because if I attack first, they block, then I get a then my creature dies, so I bring my Yara back, then I minus and I have to sacrifice my creature. So attacking there doesn't work. Midnight Reaper yeah, that's true, Midnight Reaper's better against questing beast. I guess I did but like a Yara sacrificing these. You know, Yara gets to sacrifice these uh two twos and we get to draw two cards. That's what I was thinking of Yara. Like, you know, get to drain and then draw two. The last card in hand could be Mystical Dispute. Which would be sad. Let me remind you to fear those born of darkness. Accept the dark. This is a really long match. So yeah, I could do two damage or I can draw two cards. I'll take the draw two cards. So maybe we draw a two drop. There we go, to play. I think my opponent's dead. Even if they draw mass manipulation, and if even if they have land mass manipulation, I don't think they get out of this. GG. All right, previous song. Uh, Brothers Keeper by Young the Giant. Yeah, Brothers Keeper by Young the Giant. I, got, I guess we got a pack somewhere. Let's crack it open. Ah, 20 gems. Down, 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 down. Hey, Soul Farmer.
But I like my hand. Our opponent mulliganed. And they're going to... We're going to mulligan a couple more times. Hey, Yara. Yeah, I'm doing good. Um... I don't know. I don't... I don't think we... Yeah, we haven't played... Uh... Haven't played at Golos yet. But our our goal is to um, the last the last time I played this we played Golos one time and we won. The goal is to you know like rip apart the their hand because you know the Golos deck is a deck that really wants to have a ton of resources. So that's kind of our that's our goal of our deck is to rip apart their hand. So they got rid of Deafening Clarion and Drawn from Dreams. So I can only get rid of one of these, one of their cards in hand right now. Obviously, we want to just draw lands. Ugh, not a land. Oh, I, I should have attacked first. I just got, That was impatient of me. I should have dealt one damage first. That didn't work out. That did not work out. My plan was to trade there, be able to have Soren bring one back. But obviously this is just a nightmare. So we're going to scry, look for land, specifically black mana. Uh, why does it have to be temple? <laughs> we see two lands, those are like the worst two lands. All right, well, we can make it work. That Bone Crusher Giant really hurt. So I haven't mentioned this in a little while. I uh, got a brand new Patreon just started yesterday. Those of y'all, if you want to support my content for just $3 a month over there I'll be making some written content some cyborg guides stuff like that over there even just like the videos that I do stream every day it's cheaper than subbing on Twitch so check out patreon.com slash Todd Stevens MTG over there That was a really nice top deck by my opponent. Because they, they scryed two two cards to the bottom and then just drew a random card, but, you know, didn't scry upkeep. So just drawing this and then having to activate. This just went really well for my opponent.
I don't have any other option here. I, my other option is just conceding. I really wish I had one more life. Here, he'll bring back Soren and Charming Prince. I'm not going to show them Command the Dread Horde. I definitely thought that we were going to win that game on, like, you know, turn three. I thought that we were winning for sure, but then. Everything went horribly wrong. Legion's End's definitely out of here. Okay, let's see. So we're at 63 here. I'm not going to play Devout Decree. We got Murderous Rider, Cavalier of Night. That's good enough. 62. To get rid of Lily. Uh, no, we need to keep Liliana. Um, get rid of a Yara. And a Soren, or a Midnight Reaper, or a Bell Haunt, or a Cavalier of Night. Okay. Game two. So our plan here is, you know, our three duress, our six creatures that cost two that make them discard. That's our plan. Save in the temple, so we have, you know, good more information before we use it. And yeah, I could play Charming Prince, but I'm just playing it into Bone Crusher Giant, and there's a good chance they just waste the Bone Crusher Giant anyway. Um, I 
Yeah. That's a good pairing with Charming Prince. My opponent seems to have a little bit of an itchy trigger finger. Yep, they're going to waste the Bone Crusher Giant. Discard. I'm not going to do the double block this time. We'll just take the four this time. That double block really hurt me. We've done a good job ravaging their hand, getting rid of double fires and invention, de devout decree, cavalier. I guess, I guess now I could double block because now we know that my creatures are gonna, uh, like they actually will trade with the Bone Crusher Giant. So I could double block and then have Soren bring back the Rat, make them discard another one. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, Mind Rot leaves behind two bodies, but of course, it was, it was like two card Mind Rot. You gotta do your fetch first before you scry. Obviously, Soren dying and you know getting exiled and not getting us any value at all is is a huge win for our opponent. <clears throat> you know, playing Soren and having it not do anything that's a huge win for our opponent. Yeah, the Fable Passage ETB sound is a little long. It's a little long. They could cut that down a bit. Well, yeah, Devout Decree doesn't hit Oketra anyway. But that, that's probably the only two they got. So it looks like they're choosing to activate Castle Vantress instead of uh, playing their other Bone Crusher Giant. No, I don't think Oko has any chance of being banned. That would be a that would be a terrible confidence sender for them to print a card and then three weeks later ban it. 
just not going to happen. So I'm saving Murderous Rider for, for those kind of cards, for the Cavaliers. So I think it's better... Hey, what's up, Pepperoni? Private Pepperoni. <laughs> Man, I like me some Pepperoni. I think it's probably better to kill the Cavalier first. Yeah, it is. Instead of letting them draw three, put two back, and then we kill it, then they shuffle and scry two. So I, I don't want to give them the shuffle effect. Um, after, so like, so, you know, like, make them do the scry, you know, shuffle, scry, and then they draw three and put two back. So then they're still, they're still priced into drawing the two cards. Wow, they must be good cards. They put them both on top. Wow. We've kept them both on top. They just have a wrath. I'm attacking with both creatures here, by the way. I'm willing to trade Burglar Rat for six damage. Looks like my opponent is willing to make that trade as well. Thanks, Fish Streams. Oh, that's awesome, Pepperoni. Thank you so much. What what card was so good they put on top? Time wipe? Cavalier of Gales. Don't think that's saving them. So if they play that and then Bow Crusher Giant, they die. Because of this Cavalier of Night. Ugh. Come on, play Bone Crusher Giant. Yeah, that's all they got. Alright. We're going to game three. No. No, there's... No. Wizards can't have any kind of amendment for a card and saying, like, the, the plus one should be a minus one on, on Oko. No, that's... No. That's not something they've... ever done or will do. So it does seem like these four threes are a big part of my opponent's game plan, which makes Basilica Bell Hunt a little more valuable because you know it trades with the four threes. But I like all the rest of this top end, and I feel like I have to take out a top end card. Maybe, maybe we take out a Soren. Sorens should be good here, though. I just got. I just didn't do anything with that Soren last time. Yeah, that's fine. We can we can play three Soren. That's fine. Now I feel like Liliana could 
Like, my opponent's not going to be going wide. Like, the question is, what about Kaiserath instead of Liliana? You know, it's cheaper. But my opponent's not really going wide. Like, they're going to be just playing, like, a couple Cavaliers that are devastating. And so, um, Liliana, or sorry, Kaiserath, of course, is cheaper to that effect. But Liliana can be game winning. Um, my opponent kept a hand of seven cards. This is where we use Charming Prince's Scry 2 ability. That's a bad draw. To help us at lands, you know, we got the Temple to Scry, the Charming Prince to Scry 2 more. So hopefully, you know, we can curve Charming Prince, you know, and then keep on getting to five lands. So the problem with this is, you know, this is triple plane, so we don't get to cast Cavalier of Night if I just go keep, keep. If I just go top, top. Um, I, So I kind of want to go one to the bottom, but then if we don't draw a fifth land at all, I'll feel a little bad, but we're pr we'll probably find another land. If that was like plain swamp, I would have just kept them both. Um, yeah, yeah, there's, there's a, there is certainly a reasonable chance that Oko is the best Planeswalker of all time. I wish they would just give, like, other colors good three mana Planeswalkers. You know, like, we have Narset, Teferi, Royal Scions, Oko. Like, what, are the, what do they all have in common? They're all blue. I want a red-white Planeswalker. I want a red-white Planeswalker. They need to, need to make better red-white cards. More Boros cards. More more good Selesnia, more good Boros. That's what I need. Like, standard Nahiri? It's not any good. Oh yeah, I didn't say it was definite that Oko is is the most powerful, but I'm just saying there's a there's you know it's possible. I hope my opponent draws a lot more disdainful strokes. I hope their hands filled with counter magic. Them playing counters and fires of invention. Hope that's all they got over there. Bunch of counters. <clears throat> Come on, black mana. I want black mana so I can Cavalier of Night kill this Kenrith. <laughs> it's just all white mana. Uh I have five total planes and that one castle. I guess it's too many. <laughs> Yuck. Yeah, Nissa, Gideon combo, and Selesnya tokens would be a. Yeah, like. That deck was good, real good. Green white tokens like Hanger Backwalker, and there Arch, Arch, Archangel Archangel Avison. Wungwar. Wung Wungwar. Let's go with that. Thank you so much for the sub there. Welcome to the channel.
I should have attacked. Come to think of it, I should have attacked with Oketra. Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe. All right, that thing's out here. That's devastating. Finally. Too late there. Agent of Treachery. Yeah. That card has just resulted in like a bunch of losses today and just a bunch of losses all the time. <laughs> Why is that a card? Uh I'm just trying to have fun playing playing mid-range stuff and No, gotta steal your cards, because your cards are cool. Bleh. <sighs> yeah, one and three, we were we've been in all of these matches. You know, they just haven't quite gone our way for different reasons. Wait, is Oko, what, like $100? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, there's, oh, there's just 100 copies in the, in the Mythic Championship. You can't flicker your opponent's stuff with Charming Prince. So I couldn't I couldn't flicker Okatra back. It's my opponent's card. Hey Samantha. Everyone playing Bone Crusher Giants these days. Strife makes monsters of us all. And I require your body, not your soul. Oh, Charming Prince says card you own, not card you control. Really? So I, I could have actually just done that? Oh. Well. Obviously, I should have done that. I 
I guess I should have read the card. I should have read my card there. So yeah, I could have flickered Oketra. Oketra was still tapped. I don't know if I would have had enough to block and stay alive and all that kind of stuff. Like, I just don't remember. But yeah, I guess I could have taken Oketra back. My bad. I am poor. All right, and our deck has exhausted my opponent's resources. That's what our deck does. They got their three lands, their Bone Crusher Giant. And we're just going to do some flickering. So we'll see what my opponent draws here. If they draw, you know, if they don't, basically, if it's something that's too expensive for them to play, you know, like a questing beast or something, then I was going to be able to go in and, and uh, flicker one of my discard things and make them discard it. Otherwise, I could I could just enter and just scry to if they would play their spell. So decree, bell haunt, wraths, um, grasps. Sure. Uh, yeah, Legion Zen. Yeah, the value meaning is means that we our our deck is filled with. Um, and creatures with the creatures that generate value basically creatures you know usually that's with enter the battlefield effects sometimes it could be from staying on the battlefield for a long time like Oketra um, but yeah that's what that is in reference to There's no difference between an island and a snow-covered island. Oh, really? I guess I took too long trying to decide which one of these which which one of these removal spells I wanted to play, which ones I did and all that kind of stuff. Well, I feel bad for not taking my Oketra back. Alright, two and three. 
So there we go. We're playing five matches with our decks. Yeah, I guess I guess my opponent kept, you know, like I think they mulligan. Maybe they mulligan kept a one lander. I don't know. <laughs> Alright, so that's Orzov value. Honestly, this deck played pretty well, you know, for two and three. All of our losses were really, really close. Um like they were they were all just close games that didn't go our way, which happens, but they like the deck felt the deck felt pretty good. Honestly, I really liked how uh, this played and everything. Um, the different numbers, like with the removal spells, especially in the sideboard, there's a lot of options, a lot of different options you can play and everything there. But yeah, basically, uh, that's kind of that's kind of about it. Yeah, our black sources, I think we have, what, 18, I think, if I remember correctly. Uh, let's see, 8, 11, 18, 19. So we have 19 black sources. And yeah, casting a Yara on turn three is just not really something we're gonna do. You know, like this is kind of like like play this on like turn five with something else maybe. Um, but yeah, our it's just kind of like you know the bell haunts could be kind of tough if we take out. Let's see how many white sources we got: eight, eleven, um, sixteen, seventeen white. Can we go to 16 white and still play Bell Haunts reliably? Bell Haunt and Oketra? Probably. 16, just needing it by turn 4? Probably. So yeah, I think we could take out a Plains for a Swamp. Because yeah, there, there was times that the, the black mana really hindered us, for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm more concerned about playing, like, Murderous Rider on turn 3 or Fen Lurker on turn 3 than a Yara on turn 3. But still, I think we can trim... I think we can cut a Plains for a Swamp. I think that that's certainly reasonable, especially with, like, the Charming Prince. They can scry the Murderous Reaper, the draws. I, I think that's certainly reasonable there. Um, yeah, I don't think I want a fourth Scoured Barons. Our, our deck already had a, a lot of tap lands. I, I don't really want an eighth tap land in here. I think that's fine, just taking out a planes for a swamp. I and again again I don't really want Fabled Passage either as as another land that's gonna be a tap land early on with having the other seven tap lands. I don't want to have more than that, so I don't think I don't think we really need Fabled Passage. <clears throat> like you could play Fabled Passage like instead of Scoured Barons, but honestly like with having you know, black, black, black for a Yara, and, you know, white, white, black, black. Like, I think Scoured Barons is just more valuable. There. Anyway, back to, yeah, so back to the deck. The, the deck played really well. well. We'll have to play this deck again here sometime. Um, if you're, you know, watching this on YouTube, if you're playing this deck, let me know how, how you think it goes, because, yeah, I was, I was really impressed by our deck. Like, that's, that's the thing, like, the record doesn't always tell you everything about the deck. You may think, ah, two and three, that deck's not good. But honestly, like, that, you know, like, we're just a, you know, just a couple turns here and there different from, honestly, like that could have been 5-0, you know, that, that could have been, you know, probably could have been 1-4, maybe, yeah, it could have maybe been 1-4 also, uh, that last one, but, you know, like that's, you know, like there's, there's not a whole lot of difference, you know, in wins and losses in Magic, um, that's, uh, that's just kind of how, uh, that's just kind of how Magic is. But um, anyway, that's Orzov value. So if you're watching this video later on YouTube, uh, please hit the like and subscribe buttons over there. And of course, leave some comments. Let me know what you think about the deck if you're trying it out yourself over there. Um, but anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching Orzov value, and I'll see you for the next video.